Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wesley. I'm a band instrument repair technician. I started a YouTube channel to show what my life is like in the trades. Phone rang and it was another technician and we were talking and he said, hey, what you got going on today? I said, well, I'm stitching up cracks. He was like, what? And you need to make a video on that. That sounds cool. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use silver solder and we're gonna stitch up cracks. Let's find a piece to work on. Now, before we jump headlong into today's video, I just want to make sure that we understand we're all on the same page. The technique that we're going to learn today is just another technique for the trick bag. Doesn't replace patches, doesn't replace making parts, replacement parts if they're available, anything like that. This is an exercise in controlling your heat, learning to silver solder, and learning another technique. This is old school sheet metal work. Comes in great at times when you need it on a restoration or in an everyday repair because we see these cracked instruments all the time. So this is, all this is is an exercise in working on your trick bag. Okay, let's do it. All right, this is my jug of dead bodies and parts. Okay, here's a silver piece. It's got an ugly patch on it. That'll work. For this demonstration all right we're gonna get this old nasty patch off of here and see what we got oh the patch is split no wonder well oh, that's nice yep there's a bunch of cracks there so let's get this heat wiped down I was taught this when I was pretty new in the field sometimes you have to make big patches but sometimes you can just stitch them back closed and keep moving so that's what we're going to show here today the the if this being silver plate is kind of irrelevant for our demonstration I actually wish I'd have kept digging and gotten a piece of just raw brass but this is going to work nonetheless. So this is what we're starting with. You can see all of these cracks and holes. We've got some spider webbing going on here and some more spider webbing coming down here. So this piece, you can hear how rotten it is. And then we've got some more over here. Outside the patch even, there's some, some cracking here. Let me get that in the frame. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So we have lots of practice that can happen on this piece. And that's what you want to, to start with. You want to take an old junk piece. That's where you learn these techniques before you jump in on doing them on an actual instrument. Okay, let's get set up. Let's do the next thing. We have to make sure we clean off all the soft solder because it's going to crystallize when we go to silver solder this. So what I've done is I've knocked off all the soft solder. I've exposed my cracks more. And then this is what I want to show for the video. I'm not going to concern myself with all the... I just want to show big gaping holes here. How to stitch that up and clean that up. And this main crack line coming over here, maybe some spider webbing here. This will all be real good for demonstration. And then that's a real big hole there as well. Like so large that the tip of the burnisher can fit inside. So that's pretty significant. Um, and so we're just going to work this. And we'll have this as a before. Now what we're all accustomed to is when you have a crack... You drill a hole at the end of the crack and drill a hole at the end of the crack to keep it from running. These are spider web cracks. So in order to deal with them, we're going to actually fill them, then we're going to drill them, and then we're going to fill them again. And that's going to make the stitching take up better. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to follow all of these spider webs with the Dremel.
Now we have an even bigger hole. This piece may be so rotten to where there's not enough to stitch together. So we've got all these connected inside the inside our black box and we'll zoom in and really show we've really opened this up. So this will be good practice. Real good practice. There's a whole lot of mess there. So as we're getting set, this is Faree's silver solder. I don't remember the number right now, but I will have a link in the description to their website and to the tools I use. This is my Smith Little Torch, which is also now available from Faree's. And this silver solder flux also available from Faris. Pretty much my go-to for all my metal work gear. I love this small diameter. Now on my Smith Little Torch, I'm set up with a number five tip. And this is an oxygen concentrator. The number five tip is extremely precise. You have to walk a fine line when you're stitching. You walk a fine line of the metal is annealed, it's cherry red. I'm gonna find a star. I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna move across. And as you're stitching, you can see which way the the puddle is moving, whether it's moving to the left or right, and then you make adjustments. And you stitch and move, stitch and move. And you notice I'm controlling my heat and I'm waving my flame. If I pull the flame away, it stops. And what I'm wanting is I'm, I'm making sure that I get full penetration through the brass. And I'll show you that when we're done. We're just going to keep this up and I'm going to go down the seam. Now we're on that big hole. So we're going to come in, and we're going to stitch and move. We're going to go to the other side. And we just keep that going, working it back and forth and across. And you're working that pool. You want it to flow on itself, but you don't want it to fall through. So as you pull away, you want the weld to stop or the braze to stop. That's a mighty big, you're using a triangle solder scraper, I mean that's a mighty big area to fill. We, in reality we would do something else there, but you're learning this, so push your limits. Make a stitch, move. Control your heat.
I once heard two old timers talking about some guy that was had been building something or maybe it was repairing a radiator for their car or I don't remember the exact context but they were saying that he was so good that he could he could weld cigarette paper back together the foil that used to come in the cigarette packs and that's a level of how well you want to be able to control your heat this isn't a skill that you use every day but it's nice to know that you got it in your trick bag when you need and with this smith little torch It goes a long way in helping get that job done. So now I'm going to let that cool and we'll move to the next step. So this is the inside and you can see that we have nice penetration on, from those cracks. It's smooth for the most part. So we could do some internal work if we needed to. But if you look in the front closest to you you can see where this is cracked see the cracks folding in there and then you can see our penetration back there and I'm just moving to progressively finer files and you can see here this is our stitch. This was where the big hole was. No, here's where the big hole was. And I got a couple of low spots there. This was the one that we came across. There's another weak area that I've exposed that's over here. And this is the end of our solder. So our, remember our area was here, right? This is what we were gonna be doing. So. And everything else out here is still cracked up. And we're exposing more cracks because this piece is, is, is so worn out. Let's concentrate on filing on being a little aggressive here with my file. I think I may just let that go because I'm going to end up getting into some of this other bad stuff for the sake of our demonstration. So is it showing up the contrast on camera? This is our, this is where I came in and stitched all these cracks and the holes. And then this was the big ginormous hole over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to use a Kratex wheel and try to smooth out some of these file marks and then that'll be followed by a Tripoli. So this is a Kratex wheel. It's almost like, um, I'd say it's almost like a steel wheel kind of a wheel. And it's real good at knocking out file marks. And of course we didn't try to do any dent work or anything like that so So here's where we started and this is what we ended up with. So you can see that we, here's our stitching line. I couldn't get down here because of a dent. I didn't worry about cleaning this up. I stitched all the way across from all these cracks, left this crack for reference, came across, filled up this big hole, this big gaping hole and came over towards these cracks. And this is where it connects back into these are the cracks. So that's what you do. That's how you stitch it up. Now these low spots, you can go back and hit them and do the same operation. Just file them down to match. You want to make sure that your solder, that you use a lot of flux, a lot of high temperature flux and brazing wire. That Freeze brazing wire is absolutely incredible. So there you go. I hope this helps out there. All right, friends. Thanks for joining in. 
I hope you get something out of that. All my tech friends and metalworking friends, those are old Tommy torch tricks. And control that heat, use a good high quality silver solder and a high quality high heat flux. And I love the Freeze stuff. I will put uh, part numbers down in the description along with a link to the Freeze Tools website so that you can link up with them, give them a call, and uh, get some of these cool tools for yourself. Okay, I'm back on a tuba. I'll see you next time around at the House of Tone. This is Wes Lee signing out.